Welcome back. Today we're talking film photography and more specifically a film stock that was released about six months ago. It's the Armand Phoenix 200. Let's take a look. So Phoenix 200, it was announced last November and became available in December. It's been about six months on the shelf now and lots of photographers have already shared their review about it, if they like it or not. And for my part, I had pre-ordered two rolls of Phoenix uh, last uh, December and I was hoping to shoot it like right away in the winter on Vancouver Island. But then I started reading about the characteristics of uh, Phoenix 200s the pros and the cons of the film and I found out that maybe the dull weather of winter was probably not ideal for that type of film stock so I decided to wait and come back to France and then it was just like two months ago that I decided to shoot my two first World of Phoenix 200 back to back under the warm weather of the south of France. And for some of you that don't know about Phoenix 200, here's a quick recap. So it's a color negative film manufactured by Arman. And Arman is a sister ship company from Ilford. And Ilford, they specialize in creating black and white film for decades now. And in my opinion, they are the best at creating and manufacturing beautiful black and white film. So it was quite the announcement to see that the group Arman Ilford that specialized in black and white film photography would venture inside the world of color film negatives. But it's a great thing to see a new player in the game because as of right now, Kodak kind of dominate the world of color film negatives. And of course there are still Fuji, but we don't really know what Fuji is doing because last year they started using Kodak Gold and Kodak Ultramax pull to sell inside their Fuji 200 and 400 stock. On that note, I should also mention that Arman Phoenix 200 is a brand new emotion created by the team at Arman and their factory in Morbelli, England. So it's not like Arman went to Kodak or Fujifilm to purchase their tech or their color dye and gelatin. No, none of that. They actually created, I believe in the span of a year, a brand new emotions. And that's great to see that in 2023 slash 2024, new actors are coming inside the world of color film negative and are bringing on the table new color emotions. So what is Arman Phoenix 200? Well, first of all, it is not a professional film stock. Arman never advertised it as of, so really there is no need to keep comparing it to the Kodak Portra line. I've seen countless reviews saying Arman Phoenix is like this, where as opposed to Kodak Portra, which is like this. I mean, it's two different products, so they shouldn't be compared in the first place. But on the other end, I won't even categorize Phoenix 200 as a consumer film because it's a little bit more complicated than that. I mean, it's not uh, the film stock I would uh, advise for someone just starting in film photography because it has this very unpredictable nature in this film stock. I would say that Arman Phoenix 200 is a, an experimental film stock, which is, by the way, what Arman is saying. And the idea behind this film stock is that it's the first one in, I hope, in the long family of a new color film negative developed by Arman. So this one is the first one. Think of it as the first iPhone, if you, if you want. So it's a really new thing coming on the market. A new, like I said, a new emulsions and it should be treated as such. But you should definitely not use Armand Phoenix 200 for a professional shoot, such as a wedding or a product shoot, because you might get quite uh, surprised by the results you get once you get the film back from the lab. At first I was very anxious because of all the thing I read about it and so online about those, uh, this very bold contrast, those oversaturated images, this uh, very strong grain and the alations, because by the way, Phoenix 200 doesn't have an anti alation uh, layer. So around the uh, light, uh, bright uh, light source, you might see alations uh, similar to what you would get on, uh, let's say, the uh, Cinesteel 800T, except the 800T has a red alations, whereas the Phoenix 200 is more of this kind of like orange bright alation. So it's something to keep in mind, and it's one of the strong characteristics of this film. But anyway, when I shot my first two rolls, I was anxious about it, and then I got the two rolls back from the lab, I scanned them myself, and I'll talk about that uh, in a little bit. But I was happily surprised by the result I got. I even used a polarizers uh, on the on the photos and um, the, my, the contrast in my photos was in check uh, it wasn't overly saturated of course it's a very warm uh, film stock if it's a very strong oranges but it didn't shock me anything like more than anything else if it 
means anything. But yeah, for the, these two first roll, I mean, really happy with the result I got, and I'll bring you on the shoot uh, in a little bit, so you can see how it looks and uh, what I shot with it. So as you can see, I think this first roll of Phoenix 200 worked really well with the tones and the colors of the South of France. And I wasn't really shocked by the very warm tone of Phoenix 200. And in fact, I think they marry really well with the, the tones you get in the South of France. When it comes to the uh, seascapes, I even used a polarizer to cut the reflection on the sea. And I got those very deep blue of the Mediterranean Sea. So I was really happy with those. When it comes to the camera, I use my Canon LN7 with a pancake lens. This is the 40mm f2.8. I set my ISO to 125, so I was overexposing by a quarter, of, uh, three quarter of a stop, sorry. And then I use it mostly in the aperture priority mode, leaving the light meter of the camera set the exposures. And that was for like the scene where it was. Uh, the sun was above, uh, it was a very open scene, the seascape for example, I would trust the light meter for, of the camera. Now when it comes to uh, shooting in the woods or the shades or even some of the scene in the streets, I would shoot the same way I shoot the E6 uh, slide film. So with the uh, slide film, I generally take a one first uh, light uh, reading uh, on my mid-tones or my subject. And uh, if the light uh, condition is uh, tough, then I'm also taking a, gonna take a reading on my highlights nearby and my shadow nearby. And uh, hopefully uh, with my first uh, light readings, the standard one on the mid-tones should sit between the highlights and the shadows. And if it's the case, then I know that I have the correct uh, light reading and that my exposure will be correct. Now, if it's uh, slightly deferred, then I will take the median between my 
I like readings and my shadowings, and then I'll know that my subject will be decently lit. And that technique uh, worked quite well with the Phoenix 200. And that's the odd thing about Armand Phoenix 200 because it is a color film negative stock. So with uh, color negative stock, usually overexposing is good. I mean, I overexpose all of my color negatives. So if I'm shooting a roll of color gold 200, I set my ISO to 100, so then I have one stop and I can just shoot normally. But that's not the case with Armand Phoenix 200, so that's why I decided to use it and uh, meter for it like I would for E6 slide. It worked quite well, so that's what I would advise for you, is just set the ISO to 125 and then shoot normally. And when you have like some difficult uh, light situations, take different uh, readings around your subjects and then just take the median between those two extreme uh, readings and if it's correspond roughly to what the uh, inboard light meters read then you know that your subject should be decently lit if phoenix is acting as it should <laughs> the other odd thing is that arman states that this uh, phoenix 200 can be shot at 100 iso so i guess they refer to pulling the film it can also be shot at the base of a uh, 200 and then it can also be pushed to a uh, 400 iso um I would not advise to push or pull that film. Maybe pull it to reduce some contrast, but definitely not push Phoenix uh, 200. There is already plenty of contrast <laughs> in the base of a 200 ISO, so I don't think you'll need more contrast by pushing it uh, one stop to uh, EL uh, 400. So, I mean, try it if you want, but I wouldn't advise that you get good result from it. When it comes to Phoenix 200 being an unpredictable film stock, I have a good example in mind. So one day we had this uh, storm rolling over us and over the sea. So I shot it with the Phoenix 200. I used the 40mm uh, paint cake on it and I decided to slightly overexpose because that cloud was really dark. I mean, it was like thunderstorm cloud or something, a very dark cloud. My first shot was overexposed like it should be. And so I mean, okay, I have at least one good shot. And for the next shot, I decided, what if, if I slightly underexpose to really grab that, um, that dark cloud that was below? Um, I did that and I got this funky result. And then later on, I wanted like, okay, 40 mil is a bit too uh, close up. So I ran back to my house, grabbed the 35 mil, uh, came back for it. And then I shot another scene again, trying to slightly underexpose. And this one was just like the contrast and the blues and it, just, it was just out of this world. I don't, I don't even know how uh, a third of a stop, it was actually maybe half a stop could make such a big difference on uh, this film stock. And this was like shot in the span of five minutes. Um, so really it's very difficult to predict how Phoenix 200 will react. But yeah, to summarize, if you plan to shoot Phoenix 200, um, set your ISO to 125 shoot it in a well-lit scene, take different light readings, like if you were shooting a slide film, and uh, after that you should get some decent results, hopefully. Now let's talk about scanning Phoenix 200. So if the lab does it for you, then your roll should be fine. You can ask to have like reduced the contrast on, the, on, on all your roll, maybe uh, lower saturations. I also read that the scanner Noritsu provides much more natural results when scanning uh, Phoenix 200 than its counterpart, the, uh, the Fuji Frontier. I mean, the Fuji Frontier seems to be creating this very funky scan of uh, Phoenix 200. So some lab will give you the choice of using either the Fuji or the Noritsu. So I would advise you to ask for the Noritsu. For my part, I scan at home using a mirrorless setup. I use my R5C uh, with the 45 megapixel sensor and a macro lens with a ratio of 101 to scan my rolls. And I use for the light source, I use the Cinesteel CS light, which I made a review about it, you can view around here. It's a great light source, it's very affordable. And what I love about it, it's that it's, uh, it's uh, CRI is uh, plus 95. But on top of that, it has three light modes. So you have a warm light, cool light, and a standard light, which are for different uh, film stocks. So you have one for black and white, one for slide, and one for uh, color negatives. And the particularity of the one for color negative is that it's a cooler uh, light temperature than the uh, daylight balance. So it, it helps uh, counter that orange base of the negative. So if you look at the negative, like this is a, uh, this is like a gold 200. You can see that it's very uh, orange. I'll see if I can take one out. So it's a very orange um, base for the negative, which is your standard color negative in C41. But when you look at the Armand Phoenix 200, 
the negative is like kind of like this purple colored thingy. Um, <laughs> so I was quite afraid at first that uh, the Negative Lab Pro plugin I use on the Micron Classic wouldn't be able to grab the white balance on it, but it did, and it did a great job with it. So anyway, I would, if you can, I would strongly advise to get the Cinesteel CS Lite if you don't already have a light source at home. So by now you should see my computer screen. So as you can see, this is one of my roll of uh, Phoenix 200. And I'm going to show you the uh, settings I've used in Negative Lab Pro to convert it. So I'm going to bring Negative Lab Pro, so it's already converted, but looking at the first panel on a convert, I'm going to unconvert it. So generally I use the uh, digital camera, this is the same one. For all of my negatives, I use the uh, Frontier um, color models, but for this, uh, those rolls of Phoenix 200s, I've switched to the Noritsu. Um, Pre-saturations is generally left to default but knowing how contrasty and saturated that film is, I've decided to put it on low. And I have the border buffer to 15%, so it, it takes the measures around it and not too close to the, uh, the mask. And then you also have, uh, I only have one image uh, selected here, but let's say if you had like select the whole roll with Negative Lag Pro, then you would have this small button here that's called um, Roll Analysis, and this is very useful as well. Uh, if you shot uh, one roll of film in a similar location. Uh, and sometimes it does thank you result, but I'll also show you how to, to remove that. But yeah, that's basically the, the result, the um, settings I would advise is to use the uh, low pre-saturations uh, and then convert your roll. Now, going on to the edit panel, uh, I haven't changed anything here, so it's standard. So I left the tone profile to lab standard. Uh, white balance to uh, auto neutral, so nothing changed here. In the, in the, the rolls, the analysis is for raw scan, so it means that it took the whole roll and um, and did an analysis and took a measure on each um, exposure to see which uh, is best. So that one is just the standard one, and here is the one I slightly edited. So as you can see, uh, there was some contrast. Um, I can bring them like this. Come on, girl. There you go. Um, so yeah, to the, to the left is the one uh, straight out of uh, the camera and on the right I slightly edited, so as you can see I reduced the overall contrast, uh, I've slightly reduced the saturation as well um, and tried to grab a little bit more information inside those highlights. So bringing up the panel here, so the exposure and the brightness, those are going to depend on each exposure of course, but for most of the rules I always push down the contrast, reduce the contrast. Uh, I slightly increased the, um, the light so it doesn't look too uh, dull, but I also need to make sure that you don't um, lose uh, clip some of those highlights, so you can also reduce here slightly your whites. And then I always like to add a little bit of a lab fade, I think it's a, it's a nice uh, effect, uh, especially in those uh, black regions here. Uh, and that's basically it. And the other tip I would suggest is to go to the white balance and uh, by default it's going to be auto neutral and always toggle on and off between none and auto neutral to see what's going on uh, because sometimes the software will naturally try to warm up a already very warm Phoenix 200 so in this case it did a decent job um, but in some case I had to really reduce the the white balance otherwise it was just like kind of like shot with an orange filter on top of the, of the camera so but yeah really again if you take a look here uh, roughly i use the same thing so it's always like a low nourish two color model and then i reduce the contrast i had some uh, brightness and exposure i had some lab fade a um, bit more of light here reduce the dark if uh, the lab fade was a bit too strong to compensate and uh, yeah that's, that's basically it now so in some cases the roll analysis can create some funky results this is what i Got no, this one, which is even I don't know how it's possible to have so much blue <laughs> inside the image. And I tried to save it, it didn't work, and it's in this case that I found that I was able to slightly reduce the contrast and bring back somewhat natural colors by turning off the roll uh, analysis. So if I go to raw scan, it's gonna create this, and um, by doing uh, only this image only you are able to retain some of those uh, details in the in the shadow so it's not 
perfect all the time, but if you find that a series of images are really looking like this, <laughs> then try the roll analysis and it might uh, save you a shot. So by now you should have a better idea of what Armand Phoenix 200 is and if it fits your shooting style. Um, to recap some of the goods, so like I said, it's a brand new film emulsions for 2024, which is great to see new actors coming inside the world of uh, film negatives. Hopefully it's always nice to see competition so that kind of like balance a little bit better uh, price if uh, Kodak you are hearing me. Um, the other thing is that I really like is that fun retro look. Uh, yeah, strong contrast, uh, it has some fun elations, although I didn't have much elation in my shots, so I don't know, maybe the polarizer helped for that, but I don't see why it would have. The grain is very strong, I mean I like it in that stock, I think it is definitely not the grain of a 200 film stock, but it's a fun grain. I don't think it's a too expensive uh, film stock, and uh, it's also an experimental limited edition, so if you want to try it out, you should definitely grab a copy uh, film rolls right now because they made a first batch, then they're going to ask for the film community feedback on how to improve it to maybe make a Phoenix the Mark II version of it. So limited edition film, kind of funny, uh, grab it while you can. Now for the bads, I think the first thing is that it's a very unpredictable film. I mean, you never know, it's like a box of chocolate, you never know what you're going to get. It's definitely not a neutral look. Uh, it's not. It's not portrait. It's not gold. It's not ultra max. It's funky. <laughs> uh, and then when it comes to the skin tones, yeah, I wouldn't recommend it for skin tones. I mean, I've tried a couple of things. It didn't work at all for my. Uh, in my case, uh, I got very brown, muddy skin tones. So maybe I didn't meter properly, but I thought I did. So I wouldn't recommend it for skin tones. Um, the limited dynamic range is also a big thing for Armand Phoenix 200. It is a core negative film, but I would say it has the dynamic range of E6, if no less. So it's one of the bad. And finally, again, strong grain. I mean, I like the grain, some people don't, so uh, that's why I put the grain in the good categories and the bad categories. Overall, I really enjoy shooting with Armand Phoenix 200. I still have two rolls of it. I gave one to my dad, um, but I really like it. It's a funky film. It's great that it's a limited edition, so it's fun to be part of the, the movement, I guess. Um, and then if you did shoot uh, some Armand Phoenix, just don't forget to give your feedback to Armand so they can improve it, because that's the goal of uh, Phoenix. This is not like uh, written in stone uh, film emulsions. They really want to improve it. They want to grab the um, feedback from the community so they can improve Arman and maybe make even more coronative film stock in the future. So the feedback from the community is essential for Arman to enhance their products. But yeah, I've heard a lot of people complaining that uh, Arman kind of like shouldn't have released Phoenix just yet, that it's still too unpredictable. It is still too much uh, in beta, if it's the term for uh, film color negatives. But uh, I just I just don't think so. I think in, in the world we are right now, it's so expensive to create new emulsions. I mean, the color dyes, the, the raw materials are so expensive that I don't think Arman, which by the way is ill for and specialized in black and white film, they have to create new equipments to create color film negatives. And all of that is very expensive. So to make it uh, profitable and uh, solvables, they need to release it uh, as soon as they can and then improve it as they go on. So could they have waited another year to release Phoenix 200? Maybe, but maybe they would have just killed the project because it was too expensive and you need to get some return on it. I mean, at the end of the day, Ilford and Armand, they're companies, they need to make money to stay alive. So yeah, it's it's there are two camps like release it now, release it later. I think it was a good thing. Yes, it's unpredictable, but it's again fun to see a new film stock. That's for me guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this somewhat review of Armand Phoenix 200. And if you got something out of it, please consider liking and subscribing so I can do more of those videos in the future. And I'll see you next time.